Hi, I'm Amy Wolf with ViewCast. It started with talented medical students, donated time, and a trailer in East Nashville. Now the all-volunteer Shade Tree Clinic is growing in more ways than one. ViewCast Carol Bartu gives us the story. After hours in East Nashville, many people go without health care here. But six years ago, Vanderbilt Medical students opened an after-hours clinic in this area, completely student and volunteer run, and completely free. Walk right in here, we can have a seat. Gilberto Morales, who used to attend Shade Trees clinics in their tiny, cramped, run-down trailer just about a mile away, says Shade Tree changed him, improved his life. Um, obviously, a bunch of patients have started to arrive, so I'm gonna go get their charts together and hand them out to you guys. But things have changed for Shade Tree, too. How are you? Uh, just Good fine. to see you. Glad to see you too. Welcome to our new home. Yeah, you look pretty. Yeah, what do you think? Much improved. Yeah. <laughs> Shade Tree has now moved up the street, up in size, functionality, and curb appeal. But one thing remains just the same. The patients and the students here have a relationship that serves as a model of teamwork. I do believe that if there were more clinics like this, people will will be more eager to come to doctors and, and, and take care of themselves. Because there's a lot of people that want to take care of themselves, but don't have any place like this, where to come. Just after 6 p.m., the hallways are bustling with students as well as top physicians from the Vanderbilt University Medical Center who offer guidance and support. Clinic visits for patients like Morales are true primary health care visits, but there is more. I'm Vanessa. How are you doing, Vanessa? I'm a patient health educator. Students in a patient health education program, or PHE, advocate for patients and they teach them about their chronic conditions. We've uh, tripled the size of the patient health education program to include all of our patients with uh, chronic disease, including respiratory, um, heart disease, as well as diabetes. A research project based on the PHE program is underway. The idea is that a patient could hopefully finish this curriculum, assuming they show up to appointments and all that stuff, um, in a year, and then we're going to do a post-quiz measuring how, how their knowledge of the disease has changed. So last time you were here, we talked about exercising. Already, students have evidence of both successes and challenges. Diabetic patients have a goal of keeping their blood sugars low, but that has proven to be difficult. Let's do some concrete numbers. How many times a week? Uh, let's, let's do it two, three times a week. Hi, how are you guys doing today? Another goal is to educate about the risk for pneumonia and to vaccinate to prevent it. Last spring, about 36% of patients had the vaccine at Shade Tree, but seven months later, it was approaching 60%. I've hit walk from here to that door without running out of breath. Tina Stevens is enrolled in the PHE program for chronic lung disease. And I check in with them all the time I'm here, you know. I was having appointments like every other week to start with. You don't have any questions, you're not having any trouble with your ne using your nebulizer, it's not interfering with anything, you're able to do it just fine and all of that. Now Stevens is able to walk longer distances. She says she feels much better. Without this, I, I don't know where I'd be. I mean, because I don't get any kind of medical, I don't have any kind of medical. They're doing it all for me. <laughs> but students say the patients do the hard work. Aside from the free price tag, Shade Tree offers regular access and energetic coaching. It remind me about my duties as a diabetic uh, uh, patient, and, and I listen. And the research Morales and others participate in may provide important evidence that even in neighborhoods with less access to health care, partnerships, education, and caring can lead to better health. Well, they, they keep me in track. <laughs> For ViewCast, I'm Carol Bartu. Vanderbilt med students not only work with patients, they also do almost all of the fundraising to support the clinic. Learn about the clinic and registration for the Shade Tree Trot at shadetreeclinic.org. <laughs> Hungry for some research? See what Vanderbilt folks are doing in and outside the lab on news.vanderbilt.edu and news.vanderbilt.edu slash research. Four years in a row, the U.S. News World Report ranks Peabody the number one graduate school of education. The Vanderbilt School of Medicine ranked 14th. The Law School 16th. The Owen Graduate School of Management moved up to 25th. And the Engineering School is at 35th. 
Congratulations to Vanderbilt Owen Graduate School of Management Professor Michael Burcham. He was honored at the White House as a champion of change by President Obama's Winning the Future initiative. Along with teaching at Vanderbilt, Burcham is the CEO of the Nashville Entrepreneur Center. Now to a champion on the court. Commodore women's basketball coach Melanie Balcom now has more than 400 career wins as a college basketball coach. More than 230 of those are from her 10 seasons here at Vanderbilt. Follow All the Doors action on VUCommodores.com. Wow! Spring is in the air, and that means Commodore's baseball. Coach Tim Corbin gave a cool behind-the-scenes tour to batmaker Di Marini. Take a look. Back in 2003, when I took over here, when these facilities were first built, we wanted them built in a certain way where a kid could come in and without being told anything, they could look at it and say, wow, I can utilize this space. This space is going to help me grow. I'd love to take you guys around and just take a look at it so you see what, what I'm talking about. This is the concourse area between the baseball stadium and our football stadium. But what we did is we utilized a spot down here underneath the football stands. We made it a, kind of an indoor pitching lab for our pitchers. Come on down. You got two guys throwing right now. You got a video camera here. And then you got two video cameras down there that are facing the pitchers so the pitchers can view what they're doing and see their mechanics. The great thing about these facilities is they're very close. We might be one of the few schools in the country that have a basketball, football, and baseball stadium that are actually linked together. And essentially what we're doing is we're walking behind our left field fence underneath Memorial Gymnasium into our batting cages. Okay, now we'll head into our batting cages. We've got five cages stretched among almost 100 feet. We've got pit pitching machines at every angle. Watch the full video, including a look at where some professional baseball players hang out when they visit campus at youtube.com. Search Vanderbilt Baseball Behind the Curtain. For ViewCast, I'm Amy Wolf.